Right now, so many people across the globe are ridiculously eager to hit up their favorite vacation spots. A relaxing, idyllic holiday is high on the priority list for most of us. However, the realm of horror movies has taught us that holidays, vacations, weekend breaks, etc. are not always quite as perfect and dreamy as we may imagine, of course. Yet all such vacations offer up the possibility to be drenched in genuine dread and disaster. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are the 10 most terrifying vacation horror movies. Number 10. A Perfect Getaway If you've got a thrilling horror picture titled A Perfect Getaway, chances are that the getaway in question is one that's far from perfect. Hitting the silver screen back in 2009, A Perfect Getaway has quite the impressive cast. With Mila Jovovich, Timothy Oliphant, Marley Shelton, Steve Zahn, and a certain Chris Hemsworth among the ranks in David Toohey's film. Set in Hawaii, this movie revolves around three vacationing couples, with the hunt on to find out which of these couples is responsible for having killed off two other tourists. Red herrings aplenty are on offer here, with each duo continuing to accuse the other couples as being behind the murders. What a perfect getaway does best is how it leads you up the garden path of uncertainty, forever planting seeds of doubt as to who the real antagonists of the picture are. It's in these moments that the film really shines, and the teasers and fake outs seen throughout the movie add an extra layer of replayability to what many had thought would just be a generic holiday makers get killed effort. Number 9. Turistas Also known as Paradise lost in some markets, Turista sees a backpacking vacation to Brazil turn into a full-on organ harvest. Released in 2006 with an impressive cast featuring Josh Duhamel, Melissa George, Olivia Wilde, and Bo Garrett, this Josh Stockwell-directed film sees a group of holidaymakers and tourists drugged and held captive. The twisted Zamora intent on taking these vacationers' organs as payback for all the organs the rest of the world has taken from Brazilians over the years. Skewed logic? For sure. But that doesn't stop tourists from being a massively effective, slightly gross feature, though. It's intense, it's chilling, and there's a particular flooded cave sequence that's genuine edge-of-your-seat stuff, with tourists offering plenty for horror hounds to lap up. Of course, you can clearly see that this was a movie made to cash in on the torture porn phase that was ushered in by the likes of Saw and Hostel a year or two prior. But Touristus' setting alone makes it stand out as something unique in that oft-stomach-churning subgenre. Number 8. Images One way to put a downer on any vacation is to undergo a series of hallucinations that have you questioning your own sanity. For Susanna York's children's author Catherine, that's exactly the case in 1972's Images. Directed by the legendary Robert Altman, Images sees Catherine start to see things that aren't there, notably other men in place of her actual husband Hugh. Deciding to swap their London life for a jaunt away to a remote Irish cottage, the picture soon unravels into a tale of obsession, of paranoia, and of psychological torment, as Catherine becomes completely unable to decipher who is really who and what has or hasn't happened. All as dead bodies pile up around her. To Catherine, her husband takes on the visage of several of her former lovers, while she also starts to be stalked by her own doppelganger. And as Images comes to a close, York's character hits said doppelganger with her car, knocking her off a cliff and killing her. The kicker is, the final scene of the movie has this doppelganger confront Catherine, revealing that it was actually hubby Hugh who'd been hit and killed. To say Images is a trippy, trippy picture would be a major understatement. Number 7. Hostel For many Americans, it's almost a rite of passage to vacation around Europe during their college years. That was until Hostel headed to the silver screen in 2005. After this Eli Roth-helmed picture was released, that was surely enough to turn many a would-be traveler completely off the idea of vacationing through Europe. In that movie, what started as a night of partying in Amsterdam ended up with terror, torture, and death in Slovakia courtesy of the Elite Hunting Club. His pals Josh and Ollie never make it home from this vacation. Yet Jay Hernandez's Paxton just about managed to make it out of this bloody brutal movie in one piece. Of course, Paxton will be killed off in the opening act of Hostel Part 2, but still. Such a terrifying vacation experience did Hostel deliver, officials of both Slovakia and the Czech Republic slammed the film for its depiction of their countries and for the negative impact Roth's gruesome effort had on their respective tourist trades. Number 6. Race with the Devil Enjoy your trip, have a good time, leave this up to me. If you hear that from the local lawman of a small town community that's baying for your blood because you witnessed a satanic sacrifice, you should be running for the hills. That was indeed the case in 1975's Race with the Devil, which is very much a classic of its time. 
part horror movie, part road movie and all suspense, this Jack Star at Picture is an absolute blast. Starring Peter Fonda, Warren Oakes, Loretta Swit and Lara Parker as two married couples, Race with the Devil finds this foursome heading off for a ski-filled vacation in Aspen, Colorado. Sadly, there was to be no skiing in snowy landscapes for these characters, for their trip to Aspen was interrupted by a totally inconvenient battle for their very lives. That being down to how the males of the group accidentally view a human sacrifice ceremony taking place during a mid-trip stop they make. From there, these Satanists end up chasing our four leads across the country, paying for blood. As the film ends with the satanic threat having seemingly been evaded, what is a moment of celebration turns into a moment of dread, as Race with the Devil concludes with the Satanists circling around our leads with that goddamn prick of a lawman amongst their ranks. Number 5. The Ruins Based on Scott Smith's 2006 novel of the same name, 2008's The Ruins uses Mexico as its vacation locale of choice. Two young American couples find themselves becoming pals with a German tourist on a mission to find his missing brother. That may be pretty standard fodder for such a picture, but the caveat here is that their quest sees this group butting heads with some Mayan villagers who don't take too kindly to their presence. For the Mayans, they fear the vines that are commonplace in the jungle setting that they call home. For the tourists, they think the Mayans are a tad nuts to be scared of some obviously totally not dangerous vines. Of course, the vines in question do have a mind of their own. And one by one, our central characters become infected, manipulated and or killed by these curious controlling vines that lurk in and around the Mayan ruins. By the time all's said and done, Jenna Malone's Amy is the only one of the bunch to make her escape from the jungle. Even then though, there's an alternative ending of the movie that sees this happy ending being followed by the realization that Amy has indeed been corrupted by the vines that had tormented her partner and friends. Number 4. Eden Lake James Watkins 2008 Eden Lake is a truly grim and depressing movie. One doesn't always have to travel overseas to encounter vacation terror. For Eden Lake had Kelly Riley's Jenny and Michael Fassbender's Steve opting to travel to a remote lakeside locale for a quiet weekend breakaway. This beautiful private time away from the hustle and bustle goes totally belly up, mind, when a group of teenagers start to cause bother in and around Jenny and Steve's camp. Bunch of young scallywags trying to act hard in front of their mates are ah, just telling them to be on their way. That approach is the one initially taken, but these teens suddenly up the ante, eventually torturing Steve horrifically before killing him. For Jenny, she managed to make it out of the woods and to the safety of a nearby housing estate, only for the film to end with the reveal that Riley's character had ended up in the home of a teenager who was left dead earlier because of this whole messed up situation. As mentioned, Eden Lake is a gut punch of a movie, with there being no happy endings on show here. Number 3. The Breed Inherited a fancy cabin, you say? And you're gonna take your slew of disposable generic pals with you? Yep, that ticks a couple of key boxes for your regular horror vacation picture. Nicholas Mastandrea's directorial debut, The Breed, follows that exact premise. Two brothers are gifted a cabin on an island after their uncle passes away. Deciding to invite some of their friends out for a mini vacation, things obviously soon take a turn for the worse. There's no messed up teenage murderers here, there's no miffed locals looking to harvest organs, there's not even a hook-handed killer on the prowl. Instead, the threat of 2006's The Breed is a pack of genetically altered ravenous dogs. You see, the island where the majority of The Breed's action takes place houses an abandoned facility that was used to breed a bunch of mutated murderous hounds. Spying the film's protagonists as the perfect fresh meat, said hounds are on the hunt to off each and every one of the group. Oh, and if you get bitten by one of these dogs, you start to become feral. Unfortunately for the beasts at the center of this picture, they didn't realize they were messing with the utterly badass Michelle Rodriguez. And thus things don't work out that well for them by the time the breed comes to a close. Number 2. Death of Me Imagine heading to your dream vacation to Thailand, hitting the booze hard, then waking up to a video that causes you to question what went on during the night prior. No, not in a wait, we met Mike Tyson kind of way, a la The Hangover. Instead, Death of Me sees vacationing couple Christine and Neil wake up to find a video of them having some intense rough sex, before Neil then strangles his bow and dumps her body in a shallow grave. In the present day mind, Christine is clearly alive and well, as she and her partner have to work out what the hell is going on. 
and that quest takes them into the realm of talismans, witchcraft, and the general dark arts, while an ominous typhoon watches over proceedings. Tikula Maggie Q is on phenomenal form, as her Christine gets thoroughly put through the ringer in this Darren Boozman picture. Number 1. Long Weekend Long Weekend is a horror movie that explores the horrific actions of mankind on the environment. In the 1978 original, the film would later be remade by urban legends Jamie Blanks in 2008, John Hargreaves and Bryony Behetz play a married couple who head out for a beach vacation, designed to put some spark back into their dour relationship. By the time the picture concludes, both Hargreaves as Peter and Behetz as Marsha are dead, all due to Mother Nature taking some semblance of revenge for the couple's awful ways. Those awful ways include setting bushfires, killing a sea cow, smashing an eagle's egg, and generally being totally disrespectful asses to nature. That is, of course, until nature starts to turn the tables on Peter and Marsha, as the elements and animals of the wild start to fight back. One could argue that the terror's intention of Long Weekend are maybe diluted by the fact that you're largely cheering on Mother Nature throughout the picture, but that certainly doesn't take away from the core message. 